Aaron Pike, John Boy Smith. Who would you say he'd be neck and neck? I'm going to keep an eye on John Boy Smith. Yeah. And he's got a 20 minute 10K, so he's fast. But he's the first time he's been here, so he's not done the course yet. Right. And they're about to head off. Open division, the fastest wheelchair race 10K in the country, and they're off. All right. The race is underway right now down Peachtree Street at Lenox Square and making its way past the Westin, uh, hopefully toward uh, Piedmont Road here momentarily. You look at Daniel Romanchuk, and the guy's just 19 years old, Dave, and that's really the key. We see, you know, Krieger Chabord, who's a five-time Open champion, now the Masters defending champion. He's in his mid-50s, and we've been seeing that we're looking for that new blood in the wheelchair division, and, and Daniel's the guy that's really going to hold that banner for years to come. Oh, he will. He will be the elite man in the wheelchair racing field for a long time to come. Got an extremely long wingspan, and he's very strong. Yes, yeah, seven-foot wingspan. I mean, this is a big kid. Big, powerful, and young. Kind of bulletproof. Almost uh -oh. bulletproof. We'll see. Here go the women. Off and wheeling. Come on if you can see these wheelchair racers. The women's open division is off and wheeling. 627 masters, grandmasters, and juniors. What is the prime age for a wheelchair racer? Is, is it different? Well, it depends on how you get into a wheelchair. In other words, if you get in through, like Krieger Shabort was a South African, and he got in because a bomb landed, and he got he was a soldier, and so he was injured. Yeah. Other people like Tatiana, born the way they were born, and so they're not disabled. They're perfectly able because they've been born this way their entire life. They don't know anything in, any different. Yeah. And so it's not really the prime age. It's how long you've been training, mm -hmm. and, and that's what it comes down to. Someone like Daniel Romanchuk, uh, a young man, tr you know, the prime of his life, and he's now fully as an athlete. So, guys, we were seeing guys in their 50s who were still winning competitions, and we kept saying, boy, we hope some young guys get into this, but there's this other sport called hang crank cycles, but those have gears. But it's easier when, because of war, when people get injured in war, it's easier to get started in athletics by having a geared operation. So, push rim wheelchair racing is just, that's foot racing. When you go to the uh, triathlon, the, the running aspect is push rim wheelchairs where the the geared hand crank, that's that's cycling. So it's a, a different thing altogether, and cycling is easier than running in that sense to get started. That's why we're not we were not seeing new blood into the push rim division for years. The World Marathon Majors has now instituted a wheelchair push rim division with a fifty thousand dollars series prize at the end of Boston Marathon because and New York City Marathon, Chicago Marathon, $20,000 to the winner. Wow. So there's new financial incentives for the wheelchair division to bring them back to what they were maybe two decades ago. And historically, you always think about the University of Illinois in Champaign, where so many great athletes have come through. The, the program there has always been so exemplary. This started after World War II. It was the first program like it in the world. Again, reha rehabbing soldiers are coming back from the war, and it's just been a standout. Both uh, Tatiana McFadden, Daniel Romachuk, uh, Susanna Scaroni, they all operate out of Champaign-Urbana, and it's just been the exemplar program in the world, not just the nation. We've been at war for a very long time here in the United States, and with that, we have seen a lot of injured soldiers. And one of the results of that has been uh, really an advance in technology for prosthetics mm -hmm. and also wheelchairs. And, and that certainly has been at the forefront of some of the advancements that we have seen in terms of the mechanics of the sport. Well, it, well, it used to be that if you were injured, that was the end of this. And there's some, some parts of the world, that's still the case. I mean, a lot of the athletes in America will bring chairs down to South America and other places that don't have them. Because once you're injured, you're bedridden. That's it. You have no other opportunities. And so the old chairs, as the technology changes, you see them being shipped to other parts of the world to give other kids in other countries opportunities to have an outlet. Dave, who's in? Who's in? Oh, well, we're waiting for... Uh, Push assist uh, division there. Okay. Right now, you've got Daniel Romanchuk at the front, Aaron Pike right behind him. Aaron's a lot bigger man than Daniel, so on the downhill especially, he may pull ahead. And also, you've got Josh Cassidy there. In the women's race, Susanna Scaroni is in front of Tatiana and trying to create space, but it's not happened yet. And she beat her in their last competition in June at the New York uh, 10K Mini. She beat her by nearly a minute, So, but they do train together, so there's no surprises for either one of them right now. Is the issue of injury more problematic for many of these athletes? I, I, I have spoken with a number of them over the years 
where there are nagging injuries that seemingly are such that it's more difficult for them to get over. They're more lingering. They have to be more aware of, of what their body is experiencing as well. A lot of these athletes race with pain. Uh, for example, Creek Skyboard, who had uh, his midsection blown away by a bomb in South Africa. Yep. Um, he has phantom pain all the time. A lot of the amputees will have the phantom pain, that, and they have, but they have back problems. I mean, they're going to do the equivalent of about 3,000 push-ups and 3,000 uh, crunches over the course of this race. So you imagine that puts a lot of stress on the upper body. And then when they're done with this, they're going to come back to your race in Oh, but we're town. a cakewalk. We're only 5,000 meters. We're not nearly <laughs> as long. 5K. All right. It's, it's hard to tell with the helmets here. So who are we looking at in front, back? Right now on the left side of your screen, you've got uh, Aaron Pike has passed in front of Daniel Romanchuk, but Romanchuk is not letting him go. He's drafting Aaron, which is something you see in NASCAR. You see it in wheelchair racing. If you look at the women's side, Susanna Scaroni is in front of Tatiana right now. She's trying to create a gap because once they get to the hills, that's Tatiana's strength. Right. So that, that's it. There's there's horses for courses. And uh, Scaroni is a smaller person, so she can go uh, up, up hills a little bit better. And uh, but down hills, that's where uh, that's where Tatiana's strength comes into play. And so it's that how, weight thing again. How big a deal is drafting? When, when I think about drafting in NASCAR, I'm thinking about vehicles at 185 miles an hour. I mean, this is not very fast. Is that still an no, issue it's, here? It, it's it's huge. huge. It's it's just like cycling. It's it's huge, just like the Tour de France. You look at you look at this. You're going the mass, the speed, and the wind friction that you're getting in these chairs is so much better. You get a five to seven percent advantage leading it in a foot race, just the runners, because of the speed of what they're going. But these guys are going downhill 30, 40 miles an hour, so it's a huge thing. If you're third or fourth in line in a in a lineup, that we don't see that today, you might be doing one third the number of strokes on the, in fourth place than the guy in the lead is doing. And so they get mad. You know, there's sort of a there's an honor system working out in wheelchair racing a lot of times where it's you got to take your turn at the front to do your poll. And if you don't, you, you, you'll hear about it. Yeah. We're you taking a look here. at it right now as the leader now is making their way here toward uh, St. Phillips will be on viewer left here to the racer's right, which is coming up and not that far away from Lindbergh either. All right, we are six minutes into the wheelchair race here. The elite women's race begins at 